When you obey God's voice, favor follows you. Is that clear? Favor is a byproduct of prompt obedience. Prompt what? To divine instructions. And when God favors you, men have no choice but to favor you. No man can turn you down when God favors you. Do you know? Even those who don't like you do what? God's favor provokes man's favor. Enjoying the favor of God, part two. Favor is what differentiates your today from tomorrow. If your tomorrow has to be better than your today, then you should be a child of favor. Favor is what takes you from the pit to the palace. It is the flavor of life. I said something in Kenyan land. I said, what salt is to soup is what favor is to life. Except you have medical condition. If you eat food without salt, you know how it will be like punishment. Through? Except those of you who are medical, they say, I shall not eat salt. When I ate somebody's food, who they say, you not eat salt. I said, bro, so you have to be well though. This kind of food to the rest of your life is, is like punishment. You can imagine telling somebody not to eat uh, swallow. You want the person to die? I don't be you. <laughs> don't eat swallow. You know what swallow is? Swallow is just swallow. <laughs> swallow is what? Swallow is just a swallow. Don't you swallow? Swallow. Do you eat food that I would just swallow? Swallow, swallow. Find out what swallow is in Africa. Liberians chew it. They don't, they don't swallow it. They don't know how to swallow. <laughs> Many people who are not Nigerians don't swallow. They say, this is, this is, they just put that into your throat. No, I can't put it into your throat. So they chew it. You know, outside here, they chew everything. So we'll just take it one big bowl and just throw it like that. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Now, when God wants to favor you, simply it means preferential treatment. Means what? Favor is simply preferential what? Treatment. It distinguishes you from, in, in, from the unbelievers. Jesus on earth enjoyed favor. In Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Israel suffered for 430 years in labor. And then one day of favor terminated their labor. In the world it is labor union. In the kingdom it is favor union. Oh my God. Favor is what stops toiling. I'll use the story of Peter to give you better understanding. Peter toiled all night. Say labor. He was very skillful. Very what? As a fisherman, he caught no fish. In Luke chapter 5. That is labor. That's what? Labor. You work so hard, nothing to show for it. Then Jesus met him. Say favor. The moment Jesus met him, he changed him from labor to what? And then Peter said, at thy word, favor came. I don't know how you have labored in your life. As I'm speaking God's word right now, your labor shall be converted to favor. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 21, Israel labored and God said, I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. <laughs> and it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go what? Somebody's emptiness is ending right now. He said, I will give them favor. What he says to one, he says to all. If God should give you favor in the sight of unbelievers, boy, your life can never remain the same. And this day, not tomorrow, I declare emptiness has ended in someone who says amen. He said, I will give you favor. Say, God will give me favor. In the sight of unbelievers. If you believe it and expect it, say amen to that. If God should give you favor, in the sight of what? Unbelievers. It is a believers. Egyptians. Magicians, occult men, he will give you what favor in their sight. They will tell you, please, this, this place I trust as a church man, hand over this com- take over this company, take over this oil well, take over this business. Are you saying amen to that? 
But you don't wait for favor, you can turn on the switch of favor. How do I provoke divine favor? Number one, I say you must be born again. Number two, I say be at the center of God's purpose for your life if you want to turn on the favor of God. Number three, I say be a kingdom promoter. So we'll be looking at number four. If you want to turn on the switch of favor to provoke it, be obedient to God's instructions. Be obedient to God's what? Instructions. Obedience to God's instructions provokes favor. In Proverbs 3, 3 to 4, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of the heart, so that thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. God treasures his word. When you play high value on God's word and obey him, you automatically become a candidate of favor. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 and 2. If thou shalt hearken, delay not the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that his commandments which are commanded this day. The Lord thy God will set you on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings. The mo- and all these what? Blessings. Shall come upon thee to overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. When you obey God's voice, favor follows you. Is that clear? Favor is a byproduct of prompt obedience. Prompt what? To divine instructions. And when God favors you, men have no choice but to favor you. No man can turn you down when God favors you. Do you know? Even those who don't like you do what? God's favor provokes man's favor. And today, as you give you to every divine instruction, may favor follow you wherever you go. Just obey whatever God says and you enjoy what? Favor. Is that clear? God says now, for instance, God says to the man, deal with the woman according to what? Knowledge. That your prayer may not be hindered. If you begin to fight with your wife, it will affect your prayers. It will affect your favor. Do you understand that Bible says First Peter 3, 7? So all you do is to deal with the woman as according to what? Knowledge. And then you enjoy what? Favor. He said, no, I don't believe that. As long as your wife, husband and wife have problems, favor will not come to that house. Check every time my wife calls and favor will stop. When they have peace, favor will begin to come here for you. Want to know what kind of English? Go and find out what is here for you. Here for you is plenty, plenty. Glory to God. So obey instruction. Obey what? Instruction. See that finally the wife? So delay not your mother, delay your mother as a man. You are already delaying your favor. You are already 35. What are you waiting for? You want to marry India? You know, some men they find fault. They say this one is not good. This one is not good. As if it's total meat. You know, toss them. You know, toss them it. How many of you know toss them it? You know, toss them? You don't know toss them in Nigeria. You are doing that Sibia from America. You don't know toss them? How many of you don't know what tozo is? You don't know tozo? That part of the meat that makes plink, 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 plink for your mouth. <laughs> you know tozo, you are not doing as if you are born in America. Tozo people will get back to Nigeria here. Even if you went to America, don't you know tozo meat? The part of the meat that is very one kind. You don't know tozo meat? Oh, oh. You know pomo meat? Uh, if you know pomo and you don't know tozo, something is wrong. How can you know Kanda and not know meat? <laughs> How many of you know Pomo? <laughs> I don't know Pomo. How many of you? You don't know Pomo, you don't know Tozo. You are, you are, you are deceiving yourself. <laughs> you are deceiving. You can't deceive me. You don't, Tozo, you don't know. Pomo, you don't know. It's a lie. So, which one do you know? Beef. You know beef. How many of you know beef? Oh, you both. Ah. <laughs> you were the born for Dio, but no beef. <laughs> See, I just could have better say no deal. <laughs> you don't know Tozo, you don't know, you don't know, nah, beef is a bit, thank you. Oh, but no, you know. Uh, my friend, you uh, have uh, Pomo. <laughs> Roundabout. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, went to, we went to Ibadan. We were in Bible school and they said we should drive cars. Those of us who can drive, we should drive cars to Ibadan from Lagos. Sacrifice cars, sacrificial cars. And I drove one of them. And then after that, they said, we should go and eat somewhere. I saw cars park in one wooden, wooden uh, restaurant. The restaurant was wood. But the, the whole body was wood. But one fat woman, she just sat on the chair. Inside one black porch. People, big men, parked their cars. 
She carried one big spoon. Where she sat down. When she bring that, I said, okay, is this food that is bringing everybody here? If you see the meat, big inside plate. It's like bukau. Bukau is uh, not the glass restaurant. No. Uh, restaurant that uh, just wood. But if you see cars, so what brings people to a restaurant is not the big fine house, it's the fine food. Fine what? Food. I saw cars there. The food was very sweet. After we ate, we entered road. <laughs> Most of you just book our food, it's what you like. <laughs> One day, my wife and I were driving, driving past somewhere. <laughs> On this soup church, they put put samples, don't mind your wife. <laughs> that is, don't mind your wife. Enter here, eat my soup and beer. <laughs> I said, this people, people are crazy. <laughs> they wrote it to, wrote it openly, don't mind your wife. <laughs> drink, drink, drink beer. I'm supposed to forget the one. I said, these people, they are, they are crazy. Yo. <laughs> My wife was the one who saw it. <laughs> I tapped me and said, look at these samples. <laughs> you see men in front of her with beer. <laughs> so don't mind your wife. That's it. Forget your wife. Eat from her soup. <laughs> and he's here. We are. I said, not sense before. Amen. Praise the Lord. So obey divine wealth if you want to enjoy the favor of God. Number five, if you want favor of God, possess godly character. Possess what? Godly character. Many want favor of God, but they have character deficiency. There are so much character crisis today in the world. A wise man said, men of genius are admired, men of wealth are envied, men of power are feared, but only men of character are trusted. Daniel had character in Babylon and it transcended four, gener- four regimes. He feared God and enjoyed what? Favor. Men of character don't lack favor. Joseph was favored even in Potiphar's house. Even where? In Genesis 39, 1 to 6. God lifted him with, because of impeccable integrity and favored him even from prison to palace. A prisoner who was supposed to be in prison, but they made him a caretaker in prison. Have you seen where somebody would be a supervisor in prison? Say favor. This man was of godly character. Please, if you want to enjoy favor, let's see that. I said, no thief wants to trust another thief. Just possess characters. Sinners will hand over their wealth. I was speaking to one of the, one of the greatest men in the financial industry in this country, Nigeria. And I sat with him while we were driving and I said, look, listen, the thieves want to see somebody they can trust. Therefore, I said, open a financial institution and let them know that their money is safe in your hand. You will beat everybody hands down. That was the counsel I gave. I said, open a financial institution and make sure that you have integrity that other bankers don't have. This guy has taken over the banking industry. Thieves are looking for who they can trust. Many of you, the problem is this. You are doing it like them so they can't trust you. Are you going to sit down? Just have integrity. You see these thieves? They will give the whole of their money to your hand. They say, please, Joseph was trusted by Potiphar. Have integrity. You then know that there are people who just hand over all their wealth to you. They will say, hold it for me. It's safe in your hand. Because no thief wants to trust another thief. Do you hear me? Every thief is scared of another thief. That's why when they thief, they say, let's share it now. You will not see thieves say, they say, now, nah, now, nah. share it. Because the next thief is afraid. <laughs> so every thief is looking for who he can trust. So if you are trusted, unbelievers will hand over their wealth to you. That's why Joseph, everything put in heart, he put it in his hands. You want favor? Let people trust you. Let people do what? Let them not give you money and their story. You find favor. Right? Let them not give you money. Say, oh, it's as I was going. All of a sudden, they had an accident. The accident, motor spoiled, yes. People die, he, he die. But the, nobody died. But the money, just... F- f- <laughs> if unbelievers can trust believers, believers will never have problems. Believers never have... But today, believers are worse than even unbelievers. 
Many are not faithful when it comes to they lie. Before they even talk, they calculate how they will take money. They will say, um, something don't happen. Life story. Somebody one time came. Life. Said that uh, somebody's in the mortuary. The mother's in the mortuary. Someone said, that would they lie you. So I, I you know, lie to the point where you say, your mother's in the mortuary. You know that kind of lie? Say, what your money? So I was okay, come on, can I go show us the mortuary? Someone said, that boy is lying. Then they carried him. He got, drove, got to the mortuary. As he was trying, Tutu went to the mortuary. Life story in this church. My wife is laughing because she knows the story. Go to the mortuary. As he was walking, I said, where you say you keep your mother? For this mortuary. Which will be the better? The person went with him. The pastor went with him. Look at him. So, boy, so he got lied to the point. The carry us come much earlier. <laughs> for money or for what? Money. I've not seen because there, there, somebody is in the hospital. They want money. I've not happy with this. And they carry Bible in the hand. They say, somebody, the person is emergency, emergency, emergency. If you can give me 50,000, nah, nah, nah. it's a lie. So, I said, I'm going to break down. In Lagos, that's what it's Lagos. They call it professional begging. They say, my car just break down just by the way. And I didn't plan that I'm coming out. He will, he will be wearing a suit with a tie. He said, but if you can just, um, just, I think they said it's about 40,000. And I didn't know that it was going to happen that way. As you're finishing with him, he's crossing the road to another person. <laughs> with suit. It's professional begging. You call it professional what? So if you even have it in the church, you dress well, when you look first, we get money. You go and say, no. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's more blessed to give. You begin quote, you begin quote the Bible. You know, give us don't ever lack. And I know you're a good man. You're a very good man. I've heard about you. He said, you now look at him. He said, where did you hear about me? <laughs> hey, I mean, leave all those guys while you're there, more. Just be faithful. Stay tuned. David Abiyomi will be right back. An ending prosperity is God's plan for every believer. You are a God created to dominate and live in prosperity. David Abiyomi introduces prosperity series. I came from abject poverty and broke poverty by knowledge. If you're sinking in life, watch what you're thinking. You don't overcome poverty on the outside, you overcome poverty from the inside. Prosperity of the righteous. Prosperity is a function of your mental capacity. Your mental capacity triggers and determines your level of wealth. Principles of covenant wealth. Principles are not subject to the vicissitudes of nations or national economy. Living without financial pressures. Order, planning, and investments are relevant to breaking the hold of financial hardship. How to come out of debt. Contentment brings great gain. Discipline yourself and become a lender and not a borrower. Get these books at the Knowledge Center of Salvation Ministries and in leading bookstores worldwide. You can call plus 234-703-894-5714. Plus 234-809-5714. 521-6466 or visit www.smhos.org forward slash store. They worship together regularly at the temple each day. Met in small groups in homes for communion and shared meals with great joy and thankfulness. Acts 2, 4-6. In your daily pursuit of a fulfilling life, you need the support of a spiritual family. A heaven where you can enjoy spiritual comfort, a brook where you can be refreshed with God's word, and a military backup for fellow soldiers in Christ. Enjoy these and much more in the Cell Fellowship, designed as a close-knit setting for your personal revival, growth, and blessings. It exists in three structures, the Home Cell Fellowship, which is suited for everyone. The Corporate Cell Fellowship, which is convenient for corporate offices and organizations. And the Unique Cell Fellowship, which is made for students. No matter your preference, there is a place for you. Locate the nearest Cell Fellowship Center to you and begin reaping the benefits today.
Welcome to Hour of Salvation with David Ibiomi. People, if people can trust you, they can put anything in your hands. You will not beg for what for shall become your portion. In the office, don't join them to do what they are doing. The thieves will steal and say you hold their money. Just have integrity. You will never lack favor. There are people, when I'm going out, I leave my keys with them. There are people, when I'm going out, I lock the door. They live with me. Not everyone that lives with me, I leave keys for. There are those who live with us. I say, hold my key. I go. There are those that say, hey, come out. <laughs> I'm not sure of them. Because it's my house. It's my house now. And uh, I, I me, mean, I throw money on the floor. I don't. I just throw money. I don't lock. I don't lock money. So if you're a criminal living with me, it's, it's one kind. I, I don't ever lock money. <laughs> lock. I just keep the money anyhow. So you must be someone who does not steal that can stay with me. If still, I won't know. Not to make me know. I won't know. If you steal someone like me, I won't know. I can keep any amount on the floor. So if it's a criminal, you know what it means now. We we'll just be collecting like the way bankers do cashiers. You know they do it. Most of your notes are not completed. They don't, you know. It's cashiers that do it in the bank. They'll be removing. You think it's small. They'll, they'll look at notes. And they know, they know the kind of customers. Those customers, for, they know that there are, are traders that will count. They will not remove. Really they'll move from but these ones who will never count. Who is in a hurry. But those ones who, they know that if you collect one liner. <laughs> you know? But you see 98 pieces. 99 pieces. 97 pieces. So who is counting? When the machine counted, I did one piece. Come on now. They just move small, 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 small. You think they're small? Fifty customers, hundred and fifty customers. Then I say, God bless them. Which kind of money? Is that one? God no bless you. That one of course. If you're a cashier, don't do it. It's not good. It's not good. There's a bank. Every time they come back, money will be short. I say, don't be giving that cashier. He say, you know, give another person. The first day they trade another cashier, they think not short. I say, the problem is from this cashier. He say, it's your customer. Don't know customers treat people more than others. Number six. How many of you will be working godly character? Will you work in godly character? Yes, Are you sure? Yes, you sure? Yes. That when they send you a message now, you will not bring story? Yes, you will not bring story? Yes, okay. If I tell you something, you will be shocked. 95% of people who gave contract from this church disappointed us at the cathedral. It is funny enough, unbelievers, we are most straightforward. The unbelievers in our church, I don't want to do why you are looking, but believers, because now I church money now, I'm not going to chop them. You are still making your profit. Why do you have to tell us lies? True to God, it's a lie. Oh. <laughs> That's why you can't enjoy what? Because when today we discover you won't give you any job again. But if you are straightforward, there are some straightforward people who oh, please don't misquote me from this church who did jobs and are very straight forward. And those ones are getting jobs. They've monopolized the system. Please, maintain godly worth. Character. You're in a service group. They give you money. Keep the money. Not when they say, come and give account. You say, somebody is sick. You now start leaving church. For one month, you know, the country. You say, you know, my baby has been sick for one month. The they say, you should come and render account. Thank you. So, I tell people, I say, don't ever put money in a man. You know, it does not have Financial integrity. Because they were wrong with the money. Number six. Let me close with number six. If you want to enjoy favor, solve problems. Solve what? Problems. The level of problems you solve determines the level of favor you enjoy. Daniel solved problem for the king. In Daniel chapter 2, 48, 47, 48. And you all know that Daniel enjoys so much what? Favor in Babylon. Joseph solved problem for the butler, for the baker, and for later for King Pharaoh. Is that true? And Joseph enjoyed what? Favor. The more problems you solve, the more favor you enjoy. Is that clear, sir? Are you hearing me? More problems you solve, more favor you enjoy. Doctors solve medical problems. Chefs solve so much problem. There's a difference between chef and cook. You know the difference? A cook and a chef are not the same. Most people you have in your house are cooks. 
If you just change the menu, they don't know what to cook again. A cook is the one that is used to one stereotype pattern. A chef is he takes what's available to give you what you need. What we have most cases is what? Cooks. What you call chef is cooks. <laughs> they gave me food somewhere. I said, don't be chef, we don't have cook. A young boy came to stay with us for a bishop's son. He went to tell his father, he said, Sir, this one we have in our house is a cook. <laughs> when I went to Papa David to be near their house, so that one I chef, this one I cook will get there. Because he said when he came back, how can you call this one chef? He said, We do Amala with the way to that chef. Amala with the way to the cook. Okro soup is a cook. A goose soup is what? It's a cook. Your mother, cook, is she a chef? <laughs> you, you, what are you? Cook. <laughs> As well, we don't know if you have to cook. Oh. That's why you have lost your problem. Do you know stomach is very powerful? Every woman that gives her husband good food, the husband will give you good money. You didn't hear me? Someone has power. Someone has power. Let me tell all the married women, someone has power. If you give your husband, if you don't have to cook, employ one young man to come and cook, not the young girl. Oh. Married woman, don't employ a young girl to come and cook for your husband. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, get sense. God give you sense. <laughs> Never employ a young girl to cook for your husband. Lie, lie. Except it won't cause trouble for your family. Employ a young man to cook. Anything I want to employ, if you are married, don't ever employ a young girl to cook, no matter how the certificate she has on catering. <laughs> employ a young man. And tell him the kind of food your husband likes, since you don't know how to cook. If it means using your money to add, the man will be giving you plenty of money. So every man, no matter how he pretends, likes good food. Every man. Women hear me. Are you hearing me now? First problem a, a, house, a woman who marries to solve is so much problem. Pray this prayer after me. Wherever you are, say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from there to save me. Now with my mouth, I declare you the Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. If this message blessed your life, or you need someone to pray with you, feel free to call us on plus 234-811-470-9570 or plus 234-904-303-0711. We are here to listen and support you. Follow David Ibiomi online for daily prophecies and wisdom quotes for living via Instagram at David underscore Ibiomi, Twitter at David Ibiomi, Facebook at David Ibiomi. You can also listen and subscribe to the David Ibiomi podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, and much more. God bless you. Join us next time on Hour of Salvation with David Ibiomi. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries.